And this first poem is called For Example. Her karma is all in her head. Wherever she goes, it follows, dog on the leash of her tongue. Karma walks her to the corner in town with a red dress on. Karma sets her up in an apartment. Karma is the rent, always due. She comes back every night, cooks karma dinner, that demanding tyrant, refusing to clean up. Karma follows her to the mirror. She can't distinguish between them. Their wrinkles are identical. And when she dies, karma will hold her like a promise. This is a, an old poem and a very old subject, and a new subject, and I've never read it before. It's called The Church Man. I recall how he rocked on his wingtipped shoes, waiting for the service with the ushers and the deacons, slid around his wife like a snake set free, crushed the apple on the Bible, and spit the seeds at me. Pixie cut, turned up tips, frosted lipstick, budding hips. I wore a red, dark red robe to the choir loft and was baptized young as he sat and watched. His voice was soft and his hands were small, fingering the pocket that rattled with change. Horn-rimmed glasses hid his light blue eyes, said a wink was a kiss and I shouldn't be shy. Appointed by the elders to shop around the children, he gathered us around him, a friend that we could trust. Then he took me to the floor at a church retreat. When I finally pulled away from him, he told me I was cheap. I knew I was bad, so I never told. You're supposed to be a lady when you're 12 years old, just a child in the arms of a respectable man, bulging in the creases of his blue suit pants. <laughs> experience for many women, but no one talks about it, and uh, you'll probably understand as I go along. It's, it's called To Open the Eye of the Needle. I don't want to talk about my body, having slept with the surgeon's knife, to wake up knowing my womb was gone, feeling my sex undone, feeling the swollen skin sewn into ridges inside me. Jagged accidents tucked into seams, the hard pucker of flesh caught and stretched like the lip of a hooked fish and tacked down, tissue and muscle hard as a fist. I did not know I would not be able to open. I did not know that the doctor's stitch would make me a captive, a woman trapped by herself, as if a rejected man, a refused direction. He can't get in unless he gives me pain. I did not know the doctor would make love give me pain, or how the man I love would struggle to be inside me, how I would struggle to be inside me, did not know our love would be in pain. He said to stretch myself apart, get a thing from one of those shops. How I have tried to open myself. I have pulled with the grip of a midwife to release the suture's teeth where the doctor closed me up. He said, your man will like it. This scarred heart hidden between my legs, a shallow well. My body has been stolen. Let it go. Just don't mention it. Don't say which part got hurt. Don't say the word vagina. No one will ever know. Chant of the Empowered Mother Who Never Forgets. She has opened her clear eye of raging human love, watching from the vast mind of realized dreams, chanting prayers with awareness of truth, holding still the mouths of all our lies, breaking through the false laws that make us slaves. 
Pacifiers in her pocket, clutching the heavy sponge. She is the woman who was told to stay home. Tied to the apron, she longed to burn the strings like candles for the dead, to become pregnant with her life. Never pregnant again by the force of tradition, never pregnant as proof of her worth, never pregnant too young, alone, lost, hiding the swell of her secret on corners in cities with strangers who left her, weeping, strung on the wire of night, pinned down by a habit that shut her up. She will never be silent again. She has pulled out the needle and plunged herself deep into the arms of heaven, where it is morning, the morning of women. The sun is her womb. She burns the horizon, lights a path across the sea. Her blood is sunrise in the dawn trees. Anointing distant ground, she fills the world with her tears. She has waited behind the windows of motels and factories, in nurseries, farm fields, greasy spoons. She has reflected in the dishwater, the wash water, in the holy water. Her sweat has pooled on the slippery steps of the courthouse, and she paints it onto the blackboards of classrooms. Her heart bears our daughters and sons. We are her work becoming. She is song, poem, her story of victory and pain, uplifted by the power of her own hands. She gives us ourselves. This is her service, her justice. Yes, she is our elixir, our medicine. She has never forgotten. We are children of our own creation. was so great, she could ripen in seconds, pink-cheeked and full-buttocked, with the glow of a peach and a taste as sweet as the real thing. She admitted longing for shapes, seduced by pears, their firm figures lounging in a full bowl beside the bananas, arching their backs and spooning the oranges, so juicy. <laughs> Strawberries pursed as lips, pressed by grapes, piled deep in their perfect skins. Her passion, to run them through her hair. Almost too much for a girl to bear. <laughs> This is a poem from my daughter. Uh, I've written for my daughter since I was pregnant, so I've got about 27 years worth of poetry that's in a book that's not published called Lovebird. And this is Reading Palms for the Muse. The skin on my hands is turning to crepe, fading scars, just flits of light. As I sit here recalling your pale lily fingers, their live touch when you reach to hold these now gnarled tools, these rough hooves still roaming the map of my life, these dulled stilettos, my keyboard dancing fools now bulging with veins like rivers running underground, close to breaking through to undiscovered land. And if we are lucky, we will watch them wither on the bone, Knuckles bulging, shiny in the desk light, where I will write you poems of a bond so old we will both forget who loved who first. Transition. This, this poem is about when your rug gets pulled out. Something we're all familiar with, I'm sure. The metronome snapped. A stiff arm drags in time. No clue, road map, time clock. Only pen and ink to trace the silhouette of my blank face like a dot to dot without numbers. No idea forward, no backward. Only inside on the outside. Secrets all over, pasted to my forehead in the mirror. 
No hiding, only hidden things spill out of the bed at night, disguised as angels and demons. No stopping but waiting, no going but gone. Only the pro and con of right or wrong, and the voice that, that declares this still shakes with the past. So better not promise. The future is best left alone. <laughs> This is called Book. In your chair, your cave, head bent to book, your prayer, your candle, quiet lights your eyes, fingertips, bowing spine, wooing mind from its house of white head, atop an old man disguise, dog-eared trappings of sage, Sweat, sweatshirt loose on bones ground down into flesh you wrestle daily. Clomp along to the teapot, stand at the sink, look out over the Oakland Hills, delight in their heavy gray. Pause on the walk back to swallow titles, each a cell that fled your body for the shelves. Pause again, look in on me, still across the bed, my skin, your page, belly of words, mythic dark patch, your full quill, breasts, oh, love's round letters will write your poems, but today you are reading. <laughs> this is from a series of poems that David and I have been writing back and forth, which is really fun. And um, this is the first one. I think we may be reading these sometime soon together. And David decided that the first subject would be, who's holy? Like, well, I don't know. So we're, we're looking into that. And the title is, Who's Holy? Who is real? Who asked? Who do you do? Do you do yourself? Man, dog, woman in your arms, who is she? Whose mystery curls into your serpent's mirror? Who is looking back? Who do you love? Do you love real, whatever happens around the corner? Do you love the unexpected jolt of life's holiest moment when you do not know? Do you bark at the moon, taking her up from your glowing bowl at midnight, lapping her kiss? Do you kiss the poem's rough bush against your tenderest spot? Do you hold good bad to your breast? Do you feed them? Do you know who will never deceive? Who will lead you to yourself and leave you at the bus stop? Who travels in now? Holy cow, the world. Holy holds its own, holding nothing. Who am I? Who are you? this poem, he laughs so hard it made me feel great. <laughs> it's called Cosmic Mind Fuck. And it's like, you know, you can't figure it out. And beyond. Cosmic Mind Fuck. Cannot find the fuckless wonder of mind writhing in emptiness. Cannot give to it. Cannot take away its endless, enormous now. Cannot fill it with myself or the sound of a voice explaining its illusion. Cannot spit it out like a foreign taste or smell its burning light. Cannot feel the cock's last wish to penetrate phenomena's phantom bliss. The womb's gaping mouth ready to swallow whatever rolls out of the bardo. A mirage with a pulse bound by lust pounding its way back to holiness. And I'm going to read this poem. It's kind of special to me. Um, a year ago, David and I met 
at Ely's birthday party. And b before he left, he said, will you write to me? And I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> and I said, well, sure, you know. And I said, can I send you a poem? And he said, duh. I thought, ooh, I like this guy. <laughs> So I sent this poem to him, and he wrote back, and he said, we have to read together. And that was the beginning for us. So this is called Revelation. I am woman, man, child. I am the peak, the cave, darkness, brilliance. I am that which is invisible, without substance, a formless vision present in the body, in the senses, an atmosphere of bliss and profusion. I am the empty voice of rumors that tell everything, the secrets, the lies, the throbbing pulse of a hidden life spent in full view. You cannot see me. I am assertion, withdrawal, giving, taking, thief of energy, and creator of frenzy. I am in your eyes, on your tongue, between your legs, in your heart so firmly that your life seems to be your own, but your eventual surrender is certain. I am your mother, your lover, your rival, your idea of yourself undone, made more beautiful, more real, more of an illusion. I am not a thought, a word, a phantom, a mask, a mirage. I am what you have always wanted, what you fear, what you don't understand, what you have deep inside you, like a world you cannot touch but feel constantly. I am your savior, betrayer, ally, spy, guru, slayer. There is nothing I do not know about you. My throne is firm on your crown, in your face, on your penis, your lotus. I live inside you. Blood, bones, whirling atoms, filling the space of your dissolution. Do not doubt my expanse. Do not distrust the emptiness of my presence. You speak of me as a mystery, but I have taken you everywhere. I am far beyond the wish, prayer, vow, the promise of experience. I steal your ideas and spin them off into the world without asking, do you know me? Sky dancer, mirror, a blinding ray of heat. I have transcended belief. I am simple as faith. Only the unknown can live beyond me, and once made up, you will think I am your mind. Where nothing is lost, nothing is found. Trust this. Thank you.